Hello, Chandler. Hello. How are we? We are good. We've missed you. Welcome know, back. Four weeks, hasn't it? Yeah, or more. It feels like it's been a long time that it's you've been, been a while. gone. We've, we've seen, seen each you. other like two or three times a week. And then yeah. we went down to not see me at all. Mm-hmm. It's our new jobs and everything. Yeah. We had a bit of a fallout. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dan said some stuff that made me really upset. Mm-hmm. Said I hated Disney. <laughs> Said yeah. Disney was stupid. I know those are those are harsh words. Those are fighting words for Chandler. Very harsh words. <laughs> um, okay, so before we get into it, I'll do our yes. intro of "Welcome to the Film Garage 208 Podcast," the podcast that celebrates the ingenuity and artistic flair of small business owners. That was really good. Thank you. In each episode, <laughs> we dive into Not the. Done. <laughs> in each episode, we dive into the creative stories of entrepreneurs who have successfully blended their passion for artistry and the challenges of business. That was good. Is that, it, it was that, close. That, that, it was it was really close. It was a couple words off, but we'll get there. Hey, that's pretty much it. I think now. it's like you put your own little twist on it. Yeah, you get the idea of yeah. why we're here today. Yeah. So why we are here today. I am Sarah. I'm Daniel. Daniel. We have Chandler here today with us. Hello. Welcome, Chandler. Hello, Chandler. It's so great to be here. Yeah. And on this awesome podcast. Yeah. So. How exciting. <laughs> you just got back from Disney. Yes. Two weeks. Two weeks, two in, weeks Disney. in Disney. That's a solid vacation. Is that a record? No, I always go for two weeks because w- there's a difference between going to Disney World and Disneyland. Disney World, I didn't even get half of what I wanted to get done done in two weeks. I could I could literally live there. You're and at go Disney every day. World, right? Yeah. In Florida. Yes. Okay. Good old Orlando. Mm-hmm. It was hotter than hot there. It's like 98 degrees one day with like 76% humidity. Wow. And I was like, I don't even know if I'm hot. You're not built for that. But my shirt is wet <laughs> from sweat. <laughs> <laughs> it is going down my back. Sweat is rolling down my back. Every but, ride you get on after you stand up, there's just a wet back there. Oh, there is. Sometimes I'm like, I don't know if this is pee, <laughs> sweat. Or just rain. Yeah, you're like butt when on like you ground. get on a ride, you don't know what the last person left behind. That moisture. Mine was only moisture. sweat or rain. I just want that. Was it noted. raining? It normally rains every <laughs> single day, but it didn't this time. It mm. only rained once, and it was like a little like drizzle. And I was like, normally it like pours, and it becomes even more humid. Mm. And it was not the case this time. Great. But it, so it was great. I loved it because I hate the rain because there's nothing worse than when you're completely wet. And you still have eight hours in the park. Yeah. That's but, a full-time job. Eight yeah, hours in the park, man. <laughs> yeah. We did one day 14 because we did like an after hours party. Oh, man. Oh, it was glorious. That's nice. I bet it's fun being childless as like an adult. Yeah. It's super fun until you come back and look at your bank records. And then you're like, yep. So I'm not going to do anything fun for the next month. FMO. <laughs> I'm done. I am deceased. So, <laughs> did you have good food while you were there? Oh yeah, I'm about to post a reel that has all my food. I only took about an eighth of what I ate, like an eighth of the pictures. So you did miss a little. Yeah, few because things. sometimes I'd be like, and I was like, oh, I didn't get a picture Oops. of that. I was so excited to put that in my mouth. So. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> There's um. our clickbait <laughs> yeah, right there. <laughs> um, but no, it was really good, especially Epcot. Epcot's my favorite. You get a tour all around the world and eat food from different that countries yeah. and get to go to the little shops and see, ooh, there's German chocolate, which I did eat some German chocolate and it was fan darn fantastic. Good. Yeah, so. Um, another important question. Yes. How many times did you cry while you were there? <laughs> I don't even know, but there's like certain things like the Fantasmic show when he's like, oh, some kind of imagination. I always cry with that. My eyes are watering up saying that right now. And the happily ever after fireworks show at Magic Kingdom okay. when it's like, find your happily ever after. I'm like, oh, I will. <laughs> Be the projections of fireworks like my eyes literally water up every time i think about it i can see them i yeah. know oh. we're done okay we'll <laughs> stop talking about these that's that's moments. by the way we are not sponsored by disney no no <laughs> chandler just really likes i disney. just really like Super disney fan. he's a disney adult yeah yeah okay i guess we can kind of get into why we are even here today yes to talk to creative small business owners so do you have a small business that you are a part of? Are I you, do. Okay, what do you do? I own Big Time Enterprises. Okay. It is kind of a big business that has three smaller businesses below it. So those mm-hmm. three smaller businesses are Big Time Marketing, Big Time Events, 
and big time talent. So those are kind of what I do. They kind of all blend together, but they're very separate as well. Okay. Yes. So starting with big time talents, what is that? So one big time talent is a modeling and acting agency. So I started needing actors for commercials and I had a business partner that would have me get her actors for certain things for her commercials. So I thought to myself, why shouldn't I just start I'm in community theater? I know all these people that have huge talent that could be in my commercials, could do voice acting, modeling. They're very pretty to look at. So I started that where I go find them jobs to basically model, act, voice act, all mm -hmm. that different things. So that's that first one. Yes. So that's okay. okay. And then, of course, we've got big time events. events. And so what that is, is I do private events, weddings, things like that. Also, I do huge expos, like outdoor markets, things like that, which you guys were a part of, one yep. of them, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. summer. Um, Idaho's Outdoor Market and Garage Sale. I bought that this year. Yes. And it had its roller coasters. <laughs> <laughs> and we made it through. We survived. The first year. Um, but that's kind of what we do for that one. So decorating weddings, wedding coordinating, mm -hmm. anything for big events. So okay. big time events. Okay. And then the last one is big time marketing. And I do marketing for several local companies here in Southeast Idaho, um, basically doing their social media, writing commercials, filming commercials, you know, anything to help boost their sales. So those are my three businesses that are considered technically one business. Yes. Because it's all under one umbrella. I see. Called Big Time Enterprises. Yes. I like it. Those are really cool branches of things to They're get your fun. hands in. Which is your favorite? If you could oh. choose one absolute favorite. I think it depends on the day. It depends on the client. Okay. <laughs> you know, we all have those yeah. awful clients and we have those <laughs> wonderful clients. Uh -huh. um, but I would say probably my favorite is big time events. Mm -hmm. I love creating something because every event you do is unique. Nothing is the same. Mm -hmm. It's just kind of like all different and that's why like it always is changing it's never the same there's always new problems and stuff like that yeah but so what got favorite. you doing that yeah this is a bunch of oh things what inspired you, you to combine I need all your those story. creative talents <laughs> well so the first one that i started was the marketing and events that's mm -hmm. kind of where i started um because my dad actually did marketing and events all through me growing up and so i started doing events when i was like seven years old these giant expos he'd put a shirt on me i didn't get paid <laughs> <laughs> but i love to do it i loved mm -hmm. talking to the vendors seeing if i could get free stuff out of them you know like yeah oh your product is so good and they're like oh you're so cute let me give you something that slowly <laughs> stopped happening the older i got they're yeah. like Okay, sir, like, please away, get boy. out of my booth. Creepy no. boy. So he, my dad did all of those things. He worked for like radio stations, television stations, magazines, and it was always involved with marketing events. Mm -hmm. And I have a lot of personality like my dad. I'm a little more sassy than my dad, uh -huh. but so I just enjoyed seeing what he did. Yeah. And so I started doing it for other people. And I thought to myself, why can I do it for myself? And so that's why I opened my business. Nice. I love it. Following yeah. in daddy's footprints. Yep. Daddy's daddy's footprints. Yeah. Oh, that's really fun. <laughs> no daddy issues. So you, without <laughs> daddy giving you the money. Or yeah. Yeah. Dad not Doing giving me any money. Yeah. He gave me a lot of advice, which I think is better than money. Yeah. yeah. You know, because he helped stop several issues that could have happened in my business by just warning me certain people not to work with certain things like he already made the mistake. On yeah. someone else's dying and so it really helped me and so yeah i mm -hmm. would take the advice over the money that is important but if you wanted to give me money you can give me still give me money yeah. you hear that, i'll take jay? it if you're listening dad <laughs> yeah jay please give me money <laughs> <laughs> me too jay <laughs> give if us all offering. write us a check <laughs> okay so you have very artistic jobs they're all different like when you're doing yes. your party planning and events and weddings they're, Where do you get your inspiration and ideas? And sometimes they just pop up in my head. Oh, or sometimes that's helpful. I know. Okay, it's just like really how I'm, convenient. I know. It, <laughs> you just have to be really creative with all these jobs. But a lot of times I'll be like, I'll walk random places. Like, oh, if I'm at Disney and I see the way they did certain things, and I was like, that was good marketing. I I'm gonna 
take that and put my own twist on it. Yeah. So I think it's I'm always observant of what other people do. And I don't like to cookie cut it and just use exactly what they did. Yeah. So I will make put my own little twist on it. I'll be like, that was a good idea. I see how they grab the attention of those people. And a lot of times it's with marketing Mm -hmm. Um, and I'll do it. Just my own version of it. Yeah. But like with events and creative, you always have to keep up on like the trends and everything. Because when your client comes to you and says, I want 80 vases with the floating candles, because that was really in about a year ago. Mm -hmm. It was very clean and simple. The simplicity is really in right now. So it's just like always knowing what's in, be observant and everything. And then just putting your own creative twist on it. For sure. Mm hmm. Yeah, so people will come to you with a lot of, like, inspo pics and ideas yes. of, like, this is what I want for my wedding. Yes. And you have to make it happen. Yeah, make it happen. And that's the the main thing is don't copy it because, no, they will never be satisfied with a direct copy for of sure. it. For sure. They want their own little twist. So really yeah. get to know your client mm-hmm. and be like, oh, they really like this. I'm going to put my own twist on that. Mm-hmm. and But give it the same feeling as that other thing. And they'll love it. They, I've never had an upset client. Yeah. So I like that. So do people hire you? Like, do you do the whole event from start to finish? Yes. So it depends on what kind. So like sometimes the bride and groom will hire me to do like coordination. So I don't decorate, but I coordinate everything. So I make sure everyone's showing up on time. Mm -hmm. The wedding court, the wedding planner, the decorator slash the caterer and everything. So I'll do that sometimes or I'll be like. I only want you to come decorate. And so it just depends on what they ask me to do. Yeah. I don't do photography. <laughs> That's yeah. like, I get asked that all the time. Well, do you do photography too? I was like, I have an iPhone. I can't do everything. <laughs> <laughs> so I do pretty much everything. Decorating, coordinating, decorating. decorating. I think I said decorating mm-hmm. twice, but. So you work I really decorate. with, um, in, in like a wedding scenario, you work with the wedding planner. You're not the wedding planner. It depends. I have been hired to yeah. be the wedding planner. Okay. So it just depends on what the bride and groom sometimes they're like my mom is the wedding planner which normally is not good yeah (laughs) but Mm -hmm. it just depends on what they want but i do everything that's what i say that's really cool and if i don't know how to do it i'll figure out how to do it before your wedding (laughs) and you won't ever know that i'm gonna know (laughs) um so where do you find your customers um so it depends on what i do marketing it was like a lot of being out into the public and okay. um, telling me their struggles of, oh, my business, we're kind of struggling. It's kind of hard. You know, the summer months. Um, the number one thing I hated that they said was, oh, these are just the slow months. Why is it the slow months? Why can't we just keep it up all year round? Mm-hmm. What are we doing to be informational? Is it your product that people only want it during the winter mm-hmm. or is it? You just aren't marketing correctly. So a lot of times I said, I would love to come and help you. And so that's how I do my marketing is going out in the public and a lot of business owners just talking, becoming friends with the business Mm -hmm. owners and how we can make their business better. Um, Weddings. I don't actually like advertise for that at all Yeah, because it's hard that all the events, it's just word of mouth. Like, oh, you did my dog's cousin's bar mitzvah. Yeah. So Mm -hmm. it's like, can you come and do it and i'll say yeah and so i do that because i try to stay away from weddings a lot yeah it's a hard industry to be in it is um but yeah that's how i do it so word of mouth there Mm -hmm. talent is i find you you don't find me and that's so you'll approach people Mm -hmm. i'll i'll go see a show okay and i'll go up to a total stranger and be like hey i saw you in a show who was in the show not someone watching the show yeah i was like the way you watched that show was really good i want to hire you (laughs) that posture the way you clapped no it will be someone like in a show or i'll see them like walking i've done it once i walked in walmart and i saw the cutest kid (laughs) and the way i said it probably could have been better but i was like your kid is super cute we could make some money and the mom looked at me and, I, and, ran. <laughs> and the mom looked at me and I was like, oh, I, I'm a model agent. Yeah, I, I help. And I could not speak. <laughs> and then she's like, I oh, you <laughs> own an agency. I said, yes. And she's like, oh, yes. You know, we would be so interested. So funny. don't go up to a child and be like, we can, make, real, a lot we of can money make a lot of money off of you. Because <laughs> that looks really bad and sounds really Dollar bad. Dollar signs in your eyes. <laughs> yeah. Staring like, at her kid. <laughs> So anyway, 
that's how I find those ones is I approach a lot of people okay. or I've had some people come up to me and be like, I'm interested and we'll see, like, I'll say, well, we'll see what you got. And yeah. Getting headshots and stuff done for them. And With uh, them. businesses, I'm always curious how people, how other people approach the question of, um, how to improve or what to improve with the business, like without offending that business. So if you're trying to recommend a commercial or recommend oh. some type of marketing, like how do you approach that conversation without, you know, like stepping on anyone's toes? And that's a good question because you get that a lot in marketing. Yes. You, like you look at someone's social media and you're like, who is doing this? And they should be fired. Yeah. And a lot of times it's a business owner, but a lot of times it looks bad because they're so busy. They can't keep up with their social media yeah. and stuff like that. So I'll be like, Hey, who's doing it? I always ask the question, who's doing it to see if it was an old marketing agency or if it was them, because then you can kind of word your words a little better. Cause when I, when it's another marketing agency, a lot of times they're dissatisfied and that's why they're not with that person anymore. Mm -hmm. yes. And then you could be like, Oh yeah, see that was an issue that if they're like, I'm doing it. And it's like, great. Can I teach you some things? And if you put that approach, can I teach you? They're a lot more willing to listen to what you have. Yeah. And you're like, that was good, but here's how we can make it better. It's just kind of putting a positive spin on everything, yeah. even though it's not positive at all. <laughs> I looked at it and was like, oh, please never post again. Because <laughs> that looked, your grainy Samsung picture that you just took with a caption that's like, come buy some yummy treats. Like, it just doesn't, yeah. it looks, it's no one's going to be like, Ooh, I want those treats. Yeah. No, because it's great. You know, it can tell what you're or just like randomly posting. I always think yeah. everything needs to be very cohesive. So mm -hmm. it's just the way you approach it. Just kind of put a positive twist on it. Yeah, yeah that, like that can always be a, mm -hmm. a difficult line. Even well. if it's not positive, you mm -hmm. can make it positive. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's let, good. Let's make it better. Yeah, because then even if they decide to not work with you, at least you've just given them some information and, and the they have a positive view of you. Oh, yeah. And they're all and then they'll see you out in public and they'll wave and everything. And I've done that several times. I haven't got necessarily the client. But also at the end of the day, if I don't get the client, but I still help the business owner, I feel like that's a win in my book because I love helping small businesses, especially mm -hmm. in this time. It is a hard time to be a small business owner. Mm -hmm. So things are constantly changing with oh, yeah. a 2023 20, business. Yeah. And expectations. Yes. Yeah. Like once again with the social media and can you hear me? Yeah, I think you just need to talk a little bit closer to yeah, the talking to your mic. Talk into my mic. Talk into this. Talking into my mic. Just can talk you hear me louder. better? Oh yeah, just talk normal. Just talk <laughs> really just loud. Just use your voice. I'm like I'm talking really so, slow. Well, what sets your business apart from others in the industry that do the same thing? Um a lot of people claim to do the same thing. They claim to do the same thing. Um <laughs> it depends on the business. Like with marketing, most people are a marketing team. There's five to six people on their team that each are really good at something. And that's what's really good. I'm a one man team. That's my thing. Except for the business partners that I come and we hire to do stuff. Yeah. But I am by myself. And a lot of the times I've noticed in the marketing is... The marketing, as soon as they get the client, you never hear from, you get a text from them every now and then saying, oh, we did it. That's it. And I always have made it a point to go see my clients and shop at my clients' businesses because I was like, oh, I need you to see that I care just as much as your business as you do. Because a lot of times most marketers don't care. They're no, at their, a good point. They want to get your numbers up. Yeah. They're just there to make their money. And st Stats. that's what I have seen. Mm -hmm. There might be some people that are different that are like me, but I have yet to see it. So I always go and make the face and I make those clients my friends that uh, they can share their personal life with me because they feel that close to me with all their stuff. Because it's like I trust him mm -hmm. that I know when he says something, it's going to work. And sometimes it doesn't, but we learn from it and <laughs> we do a 180 and we fix it. But so that's kind of with that. I think it says a lot to be able to get someone to agree with your ideas, mm -hmm. um, especially when it's their business and their their baby. Mm -hmm. But and there's that, a lot of trust. It is. It's like handing your child over. So uh -huh. do the marketing stuff. Like yeah. I even myself would find that kind of hard, mm -hmm. like handing that over to someone else. To yeah, do. And especially and it's hard when you don't know what to do, but you don't trust someone else to do it. Yeah. You know, it's so you feel like you have these walls up and you're not really sure who to trust. Like the first three months of any new with a new client is rough 
they they want to be a part of it a lot and i need you to say i like you need to step back a little bit because you're too close to the situation Mm -hmm. a lot of the times and we'll work out how it works and that's with every single client they're like i didn't really like how this was worded you figure out what wording they like that you don't need to ask them that you post something and they're like that was exactly what i would have said um but with a better graphic yeah so Mm -hmm. yeah just the learning curve of the customer and yeah hmm and, and so what other sets me apart with my other businesses, like the talent one, I, they're my friends. Again, that's my approach with everything is okay. make them your friends. There's that level of trust um, that they feel comfortable when they have insecurities with commercials or stuff like I'm really nervous. I've never read lines, but like lines in front of a camera are different than lines on a stage. Yeah. Right. And so they can talk to me and I can help them coach them through. So that sets me apart from other ones where they book you and send you to the the place and they're yeah. scared and then they're not the client's not satisfied with your actors i show up to all my clients gigs and mm-hmm. i'll be like their front row cheering them the on stage mom yep i'm definitely i'm the momager mm-hmm. that's what we say daddy chan daddy chan dadager is that a thing dadager dadager it can be can, we can, can add it to your bio now. i like that yeah i never thought about yeah. that going in as an actor talent uh, for whatever it was and not having that person who booked you for it there mm-hmm. it's kind of like you're meeting a random person like who you've been park, introduced that to by man, a friend. That middleman's out. Yeah. And it's like, it's I awkward. don't know what my agent said to you. So it's true. if you tell me that my agent said that, I'm going to believe you. When the agent's there, they don't say things like that. And there's just that little less. Of, it's like maybe experienced Hollywood actors could just figure that out on a dime. But oh, yeah, I'm sure most people t- need a little bit of coaching. Here's the thing. People get taken advantage of all the time. Yeah. And but it's just because you just don't know. Yeah. And so if you have someone that's in the known, it's a lot better. So I think with all my businesses, what sets me apart is being their friend and not thinking of them as money. Because mm-hmm. I always say the money will come. It will we'll figure out a way. The money will come. And it always has for right now. <laughs> so far, it's working out. So far, it's working out. So I'm, I'm hopefully that plan is working. But be your client's friend. Yeah, I love that. That's a great yeah. tip. But I guess kind of going off of the money, what you were just saying, then the money will come. Mm-hmm. How do you price yourself? How do you price your people? Like, that's so many factors that you have mixed into this. So here's something I do that's not necessarily what most marketers do. What I do is I look at the client's budget. Yeah. So, like, if it's a small business and they're not pulling in a lot of money, I'm not going to charge them a lot. It might be a lot of work, but I will charge them two, three hundred dollars like a, a month. Like a respectable Just amount. Just a little thing that it's still enough that they take it serious, but that it's not breaking their bank, that they're not going to lose their business over paying me. Yeah. Like that it's very easy because if my job works, they'll make more money and then I'll make more money. Yeah. And that's always what I tell them. I said, I'll start you out at this price. But if we make more money, I want to make more money with you. Yeah. And they always are like, oh, yes, 100%. I like that. That's a good way and to word it. It's always worked for me. Yeah. Getting followers up, getting certain stuff up and creating good content. You can charge more mm-hmm. after that. But it's hard to say, I want a thousand dollars right now. You've never met me. I'm going to change your business around. No yeah, one's going to no, believe that. No, it's so hard. No. Yeah. And so that's what I say pricey with that. And then like with other ones, like events and everything, it's kind of what other people charge around there but i always go cheaper a little cheaper because they'll always book you if you're a little cheaper and you do good work they'll book you yeah and sometimes people get too greedy and they'll charge too much and then you're out of that client Mm -hmm. yeah so you still went and spent that time trying to get that client that's what's really hard because but you also need to charge enough you need a respectable amount like yeah you can't like say like you're filming a commercial or something be like okay a hundred dollars yeah because how many hours did that take you the yeah, editing, no, everything like that. You can't even buy the camera for yeah. the hundred dollars. So. That's yeah. yeah. It definitely changed a lot when you go from just doing it for fun to trying to be a business. Right. Doing it for fun, yeah, I would go out and do a video for free or a hundred dollars any You're day. Like, cool. But if I'm trying to live and survive off of this, mm-hmm. like breaking down the math and time and what goes into it, yeah, like you were just saying, yeah. there's no way. No, and so that's the thing. You still have to not take advantage of yourself, but not take advantage of your client. Mm-hmm. Find that mm-hmm. healthy medium where you might not be making as much as you would like, but it might come later. 
And once you start booking, then you can charge a little more. You're like, oh, I'm kind of booked out. So yeah, I'm going to charge a little more because my, obviously my time is precious to yeah. these people. And I like, to pay. I like that conversation you, you have before because it kind of prefaces the conversation to you getting a raise later on. It mm-hmm. doesn't make it awkward that you have to bring up now this conversation of, oh, well, you're, you're like, making more. I want more. But it's like, no, we, we agreed on this. Agreed. That's my thing. Yeah. And a lot of the, um, what I found with my clients is they'll come up to me. They're like, our profits are up. They're excited to tell you. Right. So you put your hand out. And, and say, then I'm like, great. Yeah. And <laughs> a lot of times they're like, we could have done it without you. What are we doing next? And then you talk about the new terms of the next so many months. But a lot of times they'll say six months, we'll re-advise. You know, like, I don't know if I use that word correctly. Don't come after me if I did. <laughs> um, but six months, it's like, okay, where are we? Where no, are your profits at? Logical. And that's the hard thing is also back to that trust thing is they have to share your finances yeah, with you with a lot that's of marketing. Huge. That's because a marketing budget is about three, three point five percent of what you totally you bring in. It's normally what I say after a couple months, we kind of have to spend sometimes more money up front to get content made and stuff like that because you can't do marketing for free. Yeah, you can for about three months. It's always what I say. And then you can't do it after that. So it takes a lot of time. Oh, a ton of time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Especially organic. Mm-hmm. It doesn't work. It used to work, but. These days. Hardly works. I don't know how these algorithms yeah. are working. Constantly changing. Hashtags used to work heavily. I, don't, I think they're dying out. I don't. I, yeah. Agree. Yeah. I don't even know. I don't know. I just know I get tons of emails from random people all the time saying, oh, I can make this better. I can improve your SEO. But I don't think I've gotten an e- maybe one email that I can think of that actually started with here is what I would do and here is what I would recommend and give yeah. us actual like concrete proof. Everyone else, hundreds of emails all start off the oh. same and just instantly off putting because they say, oh, I could get sh- make your website better. I could make it better. And I'm I- like, <laughs> you didn't say a single thing about what is wrong, anything you're going to change. Yeah. And you're asking me for a thousand dollars a month. I got an email saying your social media is sad. And I was like, I wonder how many that he sent that to. And did anyone respond? Like, did you think making fun of me? Yeah, was it's like, gonna... your social media is sad. We could help you. And it's like, thank you. Maybe that's not the approach. Again, that positive approach, that was a very negative and that was very mm. off putting. <laughs> You're sad. Your that's life is sad. sad. Change it. That's what, that's the vibe. That's kind of interesting. So you yeah. responded sad. and you were like, let me teach you a few things. <laughs> it's like, actually, here. There, it's it's always finding the people like because we did one with blast off where they wanted some memberships for their staff and we needed a fun thing for our staff to go go just let off some steam bring their families it's a fun thing that they didn't have to pay for mm-hmm. but we showed appreciation to our staff and so there's so many ways you can help and I always say help the community and help other businesses and they'll help you because if you are community minded and you are supporting the community, the community sees that and they'll support you. Yeah. And if they're not, shame on them. That's my thing. So if you see a business like supporting the community and you don't that's go support trying. them, yeah. I think that's doing a wrong to that business. So that business is helping your community because yeah. without those businesses, your community would not be anything. So it just says, find those connections with small business owners, community members, and it will help your business 100%. But Film Garage has been my favorite. Oh, Sorry for you. all the other collaborations, no. but <laughs> you, you guys, you guys are others. just right behind. <laughs> next but podcast, we'll yeah, talk about you. Next, next podcast, we'll talk um, about you. So social media is like a big, powerful tool right now. It's huge. Um, how do you use it for your business? Well, so for my business, I don't use it as much. Yeah. But I have to use it for those other businesses, right? Learning how to operate social media is a pain in the butt. Mm-hmm. You have to make sure it looks good because if not, people are like, ew. Because mm-hmm. whatever you post on social media represents your business. If you post a trashy theme, you're trash now. You're yes. trash. <laughs> trash. It is. Trash. You could have a trash product and post an amazing thing on social media and you'll get the Love money. It. <laughs> um, but there's just always that finding what works for you, right? Yeah. Um, a lot of problems they run is overposting. I think there's something called overposting where you post too much. Okay, what is too much? Like twice a day or like 
once I think week. posting every day. It it's depends on the business. Let me rephrase that. Okay. Unless you are an influencer type business, do not post every day. That is my biggest. People get annoyed and they'll unfollow you. <laughs> like, I do not want to see Walmart posting every single day. You're going to get annoyed. Um, <laughs> sidebar off of that, though. Have yeah. you seen McDonald's and their marketing team right now? No. Killing it. Killing it. I know. Like they have their Instagram. And was it? What was that? Gr- Grom? Grom? Grimace? Grimace. The Grimace's Grimace. birthday. So for Grimace's yeah, that birthday, Grimace, shake video Grimace like took over Instagram. I, and it was the funniest post ever. On and, TikTok. It was huge. The oh, Grimace was shake was Just huge. Just the shake? Well, so what they... Some it was just their marketing. probably idiotic so teenager thought yeah. of this idea, yeah, and they kind of went with it. So you took a drink of the shake and you're like, "Happy birthday, Grimace!" And all of a sudden, you found we're like dead in a river, and what? they were like posted, and it had like this creepy music, and it would, meant that like Grimace was killing you. What? And we were drinking the shake. It was the dumbest trend, but on I, TikTok, I watched every single one. I was like, "That was funny. That was creativity hanging from the tree. That was that was funny." Stop. And so the head of marketing of McDonald's did it. He was like, "I don't know what you guys are talking about. Our Grimace shakes do not do that." They and don't so kill he's like, you. "Sorry, Grimace. Happy birthday, Grimace." Took a drink. He then, then he ends up dead. in a trunk with a bag over his head. <laughs> And I was like, the head of marketing did not just do that. <laughs> and then like all these like marketing, uh, like it today. McDonald's. <laughs> oh, Scrub Daddy. Have you heard of Scrub the Daddy? Scrub Daddies. Mm-hmm. They are like, it's vulgar. It's Is dirty. It? Oh, their commercials. They like, they say things that sound really dirty. Like they have to be taken dirty. You can't yeah. take that any other way. Well, they're cleaning and things they'll, like, up. Bleep, yeah. And they'll like bleep things out. Their scale, like sales skyrocketed. They were through the roof and i laughed i reposted them i yeah. was like that's funny like, how do i bring that personality i could never do that into my i could never social. do that stuff here because <laughs> we'd have an 80 year old karen be like yeah stop that is- chewing your chips chandler Quit. <laughs> <laughs> so Man. side note we ha- we made a commercial <laughs> with me chewing chips and we got a message oh, saying get that idiot off my screen <laughs> chewing the chips and she was mad about it. And she said she would never use that the business. That freaking idiot chewing the chips. I will never shop there again. As if she was going to before. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Spend all this money. And it was so. Don't chew chips. That's another piece of advice. Don't eat on TV. Don't eat on TV. People don't like it. <laughs> so I think it's just finding what works for you. And it depends on your business. If you're not an influencer, don't post every day. People get annoyed. And that's the number one thing I ask people like that aren't involved with marketing. If I was to post five times a week, what would happen? Mm-hmm. They're like, I'd probably unfollow you. <laughs> but there's a difference. If you have an event coming up, you can post a little bit before. Yeah. But it's all about balance. But if you're constantly doing new things, I think it's okay to post because people are interested. Yeah. So like you guys could post more than I probably would post for my event right because Mm -hmm. my event doesn't change it's the same every single year Mm -hmm. i'm not going to post every single day for six months or you're not working on it like literally every day but you guys are like oh we did this new shoot with Paige ann or oh we just filmed this commercial like everything you guys do is different yeah it's unique and i find that interesting and a lot of people do so you're okay because it's more of an influencer it makes people want to come in and try their own thing at yours yeah when my event, they're not gonna—they're gonna do the same thing. So yeah, it's just what is finding what your business is. Yeah. Is your if your business is not changing every day, don't post every day. <laughs> but I I do a thing called a threefer, and this is my little top secret mm-hmm. that I have found that really works. So if you're starting a marketing thing and you steal it, I'm okay. We can succeed together. Mm-hmm. But it is I post on a Tuesday and a Thursday, mm-hmm. and the next week I post on a Wednesday. So I do two, one, two, one. And so it's every week I switch off from two to one, two to one. And it's called the three for. Okay. And it's a little thing. It's posted enough that it stays relevant, but not annoying. Like, so it's almost like you see a new post like every two to three days. Yep. Because a post can show up on someone's feed for two or three days. Mm -hmm. So you're good. And then that you might disappear for a little bit. Yeah. Oh, now we're going to come back and they're going to be like, oh yeah, I do need to go over and buy that. Mm -hmm. I'm out. For instance, like Bumblebee, I'm out of soap. I need to go over there, but you might, you you know, you're getting low. And then that third post comes up. You're like, I need to go get that. 
-hmm. So that's why I call it the three fur. And you need a post. When you did the three, it made me think of Girl Scouts. (laughs) Girl Scouts. I I was thinking Hunger Games. Oh, yeah. Is that Girl Scouts? That is. That's Hunger Games? I thought it was Scouts. Is it the three fingers Girl Scouts? I don't know. I, I wasn't a Boy Scout for very long. I hated it. Maybe they just changed that a little bit for the show. <laughs> They're like added a finger or something. <laughs> yeah. The new okay. Hunger Games. Okay, I guess we're kind of towards the end here. Yes. So do you have any advice for someone who's trying to jump into a, I guess kind of a more like freelance kind of role where you have all these different jobs and you're being creative yeah. to hustle. And, and the responsibility to succeed is on you. Yeah, it's on your shoulders. My number one piece of advice is don't be cocky. That's my thing. Because a lot of times you get cocky and you don't want to ask for help. Okay. I can't tell you how many businesses I have started with people, um, but they were humble enough to come ask me for help. Hmm. Any businesses will come and ask you for help. That like, sorry, let me rephrase that. Any business is willing to help you. If someone came and said, hey, can I come shadow you? I um, obviously don't go in your same hometown to your competitors, but you could go to a different like city and be like, can I shadow you? Learn from other people because you don't know everything. You may have been doing this. I don't know everything. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you that. I'm still learning. I'm still asking my dad and I've been doing events for 12 years, 12, 13 years. Mm -hmm. I don't know everything. Someone always will know more than you. For sure. And it's never, it's not wrong to ask for help. Mm -hmm. You might get some rude people like, no, I'm not helping you. But, you know, find friends. Yeah. Ask them for help. If you know a friend that has a business, go ask them for help. That's my number one thing is don't drown alone. Don't drown alone. There's enough room on that door for two people, not just one. That was a Titanic reference for anyone wondering. I got I it. I liked it. Okay. okay. <laughs> I got it. No, I did get it. I, I think did you just had it. a random floating door reference. Yeah. yeah. Just a fl- <laughs> <laughs> that would make no sense any other way. There is room for both. Don't be selfish and hog that door. Help others. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Great. So, but anyway, give help. Ask for help. Because you're not going to know when taxes come around. <laughs> I just had a friend the other day. Like, I think it was yesterday. She's like, how do I do taxes for my business? Because we just filed her LLC, opened up her business account. She's an esthetician. And mm-hmm. Obviously, I don't know anything about esthetician, but I know how to open up a business. Yeah. And so I, we were walking her through and I said, don't worry about it. I said, let's just put some money aside for when you have to pay taxes. And I talked, talked to her about getting deductions and everything like that is. But she asked for help. And so yeah. that's what just ask. Yeah. And if you need help, just send me a message. I'll help you. Did you hear that? Send yep. Chandler Dye a message and yep. he'll give you some help. And I'll give you some help. But that was great talking to you today. Well, it was fun to be like on the podcast. I feel like we had some good conversation. I feel like we learned a lot. And, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like we had some really good insight on social media. Yeah. And some tips and tricks. Tips and tricks. What was the three thing? What'd the you three fur. You called Two, it the three fur. The three fur. I called, don't know why I call it the three fur, but the three fur. <laughs> That's it's, the takeaways from today's podcast. Yep. Three yep. Fur. Unless you're an influencer, do Chandler's three fur plan. Three I'm going to patent that. Plan. Okay. <laughs> two, one, two. Two, one, two. Well, thank you Tuesday, for coming Thursday, by. Um, we will be interviewing some more guests. I'm sure we'll I'll have Chandler back on here another time. Yes, definitely. Times. Definitely. I know where they live, so. Yeah, they'll find us. Um, <laughs> Not an optional podcast. Yes. Coming up. All right. Um, mm-hmm. Bye. Yeah. Bye. 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 Thank you. <laughs>